Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest 8 second gaming. In today's video we have the Season 21 Split 2 Early Legend tier list for you guys. The Split's out, I played it a ton already and I've been having a blast with it. I do think that some of the legend changes were needed, so let's break these all down for you. But just quickly, if you're looking to take your Apex skill to the next level, then you have to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there we have top level coaches creating the best, most highly informative guides to make you the best player you could possibly be. Seriously, we have literally hundreds hundreds of guides already on the website with more on the way all the time. And those cover everything from legend guides to gun guides to fodder reviews and much more. So no matter what situation you struggle with or want to improve with, we have solutions for you. So click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership and start to improve today. But okay, with that out of the way, let's hop into things. And before we actually get talking about the legends, I do want to clarify one thing very quickly. This is an early split tier list. So this is just talking about the legends right now. Over the course of the season, if we see some meta change, Changes or some legends not performing as well or overperforming, I will be making an updated tier list. This is just one for right now. This is not set in stone. This is not talking about the entirety of the season. This is just for right now. And if anything big happens, there will be a new one. But now that you understand that, let's actually talk about the legend to start things off. We have the Mirage tier, I mean the D tier. And there are still two legends fighting themselves down here. We've got Mirage and Ballistic. There's not a whole lot that I can say about these legends right now that hasn't been said already in the past in multiple of our other tier lists. They're easily counterable. They don't do a whole lot for their team. They're just not very standout picks in the meta. They are a ton of fun to play, and if you're messing around with pubs or just want to have a good time, they are fantastic picks for that. I myself actually have found myself playing Mirage a lot more often now when I'm just trying to mess around. But in terms of meta, they're not very strong picks, and that's why they're in the D tier. Moving on up, we have the C tier, and there are three legends in here. We have Ash, Octane, and Vantage. Now for Ash, I have been a fan of Ash ever since she came out. I honestly thought that she was going to be one of the legends that set the meta most of the seasons because of how good her kit was on release. And she has had a few standout parts where she did work well in team comps, but right now she just does not fit the meta at all. And I know some people like Zara Tricky are actually trying to make Ash work and they've been playing them a lot lately, but honestly Zara Tricky is just that good of a player. He could play literally any legend and still make them work, but for the grand scheme of things I don't think Ash is that strong of a pick. And on the same note we have Octane. On certain people like Lemonhead, Stormin, those kind of people that are super super strong with movement, Octane is a fantastic pick because they can do all those movement techniques. But if you're not doing all those movement techniques, he's a very selfish legend that doesn't really do a whole lot in the terms of the meta, and you'll be leaving a lot of holes in your team and making things feel a little bit loose. The only reason that he's really in the C tier is because he still can do some things for his team, his jump pad is still somewhat useful for his rotations, and he can create some openings, but overall very selfish legend, not a very strong pick in the meta, that's why he is C tier. And the last one in C tier is Vantage. Now again, I am a huge fan of Vantage, I really, really, really wish that she was meta, I really wish that there's some way that I could make her fit a little bit higher in the tier list, but right now she is just very lackluster. Her class passives have made her feel a lot better, and if you are vantage main, there are going to be a little bit of times where you do feel unstoppable because of how good her kit does feel right now, but a good kit doesn't necessarily mean strong in the meta, and right now, in terms of the recon legends, there are just so many better options out there, and even though she can scan the ring consoles, there are much better controller legends out there. So Vantage does fall very short in terms of the tier list, and that's why she is in C tier. Now next up we can move into the B tier, and there are seven legends finding themselves here. We have Fuse, Lifeline, Loba, Mad Maggie, Valkyrie, Rampart, and Gibraltar. Now I know some people might be wondering why Fuse is in the B tier when he does seem to be super strong right now, especially with a lot of people in higher ranks starting to pick him up, but in my own personal opinion, and this might be a little bit controversial, I don't think Fuse is actually that strong. I think a lot of the reason as to why Fuse is being played a lot right now is because of the exploit that you can do with the jump balloon, where you shoot his ultimate off of the redeploy balloon and it covers the entire area that you're fighting in and gives you wall hacks everywhere. Without that, I don't think Fuse is actually as strong as people are making making him out to be. And yes, it is an exploit, and I personally don't like judging tier lists off of exploits because a legend could get patched tomorrow because of an exploit and that just goes away and then I have to redo a tier list because of that. So I never base my tier list off of exploits, like back when Bangalore had the one way smoke exploit, I never based the tier list off of that either. So I'm going to continue doing that here and that is why I think Fuse is a solid B tier legend. Without the exploit, he's just a very solid middle of the pack legend. He's not very stand out in the meta, but he can 
can still hold his own in fights, and that is where I'm slotting him for this one. Now, in the future, if it does turn out that that isn't an exploit and Respawn actually does want it to be that way, I will be making that known. But until it is confirmed by Respawn that it's not an exploit, that's what I'm going with. So here we stay. So feel free to let me know in the comments what you think about it, but this is where I'm putting him. Now, next up, we have Lifeline, and I know that a lot of people are going to be a little bit upset of how low Lifeline is, but I'm sticking to my guns here with Lifeline is not actually the strongest support legend, and she is just a middle of the pack tier right now. Yes, she has the option to res both of her teammates. Yes, she has the option to get some good stuff out of her care package, but I have said this in previous videos, and I'm going to reiterate it here. A good support role legend is going to have ways to stop her teammates from going down in the first place, and if they do go down, they will have a good way to reset the fight. Lifeline has no way to stop her team from going down. She just has a way to help them back up to get them back into the fight. Newcastle has two different walls that he can put down to give your team a spot to play in a pinch. Gibraltar has his bubble to put down to do the same sort of thing. Watson has her ultimate to make sure that she's not being nade spammed and also has a way to regen shields off of it. Lifeline does not have anything like that. Yeah, she kind of has the dock drone, but it's not to the same effect that the other legends do have. Now, if both of her teammates go down and she's able to get these resets back off, then yes, she is very strong and that is a good option in fights, but I don't think it's anything higher than a B tier legend. She is just a middle of the pack legend. So that is why I'm sticking with her in the B tier. Now, next up, we have Lo Loba, and right now there's nothing really standout-ish about Loba. She just kind of does her job and that's about it. There's not really a whole lot that I can say about it because Loba's not really a controversial legend in quotation marks. She does her job, she does it well, but she's not standout, so that's why I think she's just a B-tier legend right now. So let's move on into Mad Maggie, and Mad Maggie right now does have some pretty good uses on some team comps, but again, she's not a standout pick. Maggie doesn't do anything better than anybody else. And before, I always had Maggie higher than Fuse because Maggie does what Fuse wants to do just a little bit better, but right now I don't think that the meta is actually in favor of Maggie. I think with a lot of stuff going on between Recon Legends and Bangalore and the interactions there, she's not really as needed or as good. So that is why I'm putting her in B tier now. Now next up we do have Valkyrie, and Valk is another option kind of like Loba, where she does her job, she does it well, but she doesn't do anything above and beyond that. There's nothing super standout about Valkyrie. Before, her ultimate was just a must-have on teams because it it helped you get from point A to point B extremely well and extremely safely, but all of the nerfs that Valkyrie has received over the years has just not made her as good as she once was. Yes, the class passives do help that out a little bit, but you need to get to purple armor before she is really a standout legend. So if you're not hitting any of the Evo Harvestors or you're getting really bad RNG with where they spawned, Valkyrie isn't going to be as good, but once you get her there, then she is a good option. So that's why I'm putting her in B tier. And last of the B tier, we have Rampart. Now, Rampart can be good. That's why I'm putting her in B tier. She can be good, but most of the time, Rampart is not going to have the option to actually set up her walls and become useful. If a team actually knows what they're doing, they're going to stop Rampart from actually being able to set up. They're going to shoot the walls before they're deployed. They're going to pressure her, and she's not going to actually be any use. Now, if she's able to get to a building and she's able to set that up, she can be extremely annoying and extremely oppressive. So that is why she's still a B tier legend, because she has some good options. And honestly, I don't think Sheila right now feels as strong as she has in the past, I think a lot of the weapons right now are a little bit overtuned, so you can actually challenge a Sheila and do well, especially if you have a Havoc that's turbocharged. So with Sheila not being as scary as it has been in the past, I don't think she's anything higher than B tier. That just might be my personal stuff going on, so if you still think Sheila's scary, let me know in the comments down below. Now next up we have Gibby, and Gibraltar's a legend that is constantly going up and down in the tiers because his usefulness is constantly changing. And it was even to the point where last split I had him in the secretly broken tier, and I still honestly agree with that because he was a secretly broken legend. But right now, I think he's more slotting into the B tier because a lot more people are starting to respond him and actually understand him, so he's not secretly broken, but right now he doesn't really have anything stand outish about him because Newcastle is just a better version of him. Lifeline has a decent res as well. He doesn't control the same amount of space that Caustic or Watson does, and his ultimate is not as strong as Bangalore's currently. That being said, he does have a lot of really strong potential in his own kit, but it's not anything stand outish, and that is why I think he is a B tier legend. But now we can move into the A tier, and there are seven legends finding themselves here. We have Alter, Bloodhound, Catalyst, 
Caustic, Watson, Conduit, and Horizon. Now, Alter is a little bit of a weird one because she is still extremely strong of a legend. I think she actually opens up a lot of different playstyles that not a lot of teams are ready to play against, but I don't think a lot of people have really unlocked the full potential of Alter. I don't think we've seen as good as Alter can get. And yes, they did take away the Alter Crypto interaction, so now you're going to be getting EMP'd, so that is no longer a thing. But I still think that with the Void Nexus and also the, her being able to jump in and out of walls is going to be a very scary thing when actually people are able to unlock its full potential. So I do think she has the potential to move into Secretly Broken or even S tier, but right now some of the plays you can still pull off with her without her really being known all that well is still an A tier legend in my opinion. You can take some super aggressive off angles for free because you can just jump back and forth between a wall. You can take aggressive fights for free because if something goes wrong you can just void Nexus out. There's a lot of things that Alter does open up and I do think she is still a strong legend and that is why I'm putting her in the A tier. Now next up we have Bloodhound and even when Bloodhound takes a huge hit to their kit they're still a very solid legend. Even though they're no longer able to see through gas or smoke, their scans are still pretty strong and their ultimate is also still fairly useful because they do get a huge speed boost, making them extremely aggressive. And you still do get the highlight, you just don't get the highlight when they are in smoke or gas. But there is a little bit of a time where you can see them if they dip into gas that so you can still see them that way and you can use the damage numbers from that to track somebody in the smoke. So Bloodhound still does have some usefulness and I do think Bloodhound will still be a fairly solid pick if you were a Bloodhound main in the past. Scans are just always going to be strong. Having wall hacks and fights are just always going to be strong and that's why I think Bloodhound is still an A tier legend. Moving on though we have Catalyst and I do think the Catalyst is a very situational legend but when you are in those situations she is extremely strong and can help your team rotate or lock down buildings. Catalyst is still very strong, can help your team make rotations, can help your team lock down buildings, can help do a lot of things and with the Pharaoh door class passive where you're able to rebuild doors it makes it so that teams aren't able to nade spam you anymore and grief you that way, which is a huge benefit to having Catalyst on your team. Because if you're trying to hold a building and a team just grenades off your door, that can be a huge detriment to actually being able to hold that spot. But now, with Catalyst, you just rebuild the door and you don't care. Catalyst does have some really good usefulnesses in the situations that she is very strong in, so that's why I think she's a good A tier legend. Now moving forward, we have Caustic and Watson. I'm going to talk about these two together because they're basically kind of the same thing with just a different package. They both like to hold down buildings, they both like to hold down areas, they both make it for your team to be harder to push. And right now the meta is still super AP, super death -bally. I know some people don't like that word, but it's a word that I'm going to continue to use. People want to just continuously run at you, and if you have a legend that makes it so it's harder for them to do that, they are going to be very useful. Now currently I don't think one is better than the other, and the last split I do think that Caustic was a little bit stronger, but right now it has kind of gone back to them being matching in terms of usefulness. But having the option to just lock down a building and make it incredibly hard for teams to push you is always going to be a very helpful thing in this given meta. So that is why I think they are A tier. Now next up we have Conduit, and Conduit is still very annoying to have to deal with in fights. Cracking somebody and thinking that you can just push them because they should have no shields and you have the advantage, only to find out that the team had a conduit that you weren't aware of and now they're back up to full shields and you are out of position is just a huge annoyance. Being able to reset a fight, essentially mid-fight, is a very strong ability and that is why Conduit has always been a good pick since she has come out. I know it hasn't been a very long time since Conduit has come out, but she's always been a good solid pick on any team comp since she has come out, so that's why she is still an A tier legend. That I also do want to point out that a lot of people right now seem to not respect Conduit alts. I've seen a lot of people try to run through them or to try to play around them and that gets them killed a lot. I just don't know if it's some people not understanding how Conduit works right now because potentially they're new or what it is. But if you're seeing the same stuff, let me know in the comments down below because it is kind of weird. And last up in the A tier, we have Horizon. And Horizon's Horizon. The gravity lift strong, the black hole strong, her passive strong. The only reason she's A tier and not S tier is because the gravity lift is not as strong as it has been in the past. You're not as accurate on it, you can't stay on it as long, but she is still a very solid legend, especially if you are super aggressive. And the black hole can win fights on its own with a few well-placed grenades. There's not really a lot that I can say about Horizon that hasn't been said already and hasn't been beat to death, so that's why 
why I'm just going to leave it here and say she's A tier. But now we can move into the secretly broken tier. And these are legends that are going to be kind of flying under the radar a little bit. And people might not respect as much as the season kind of goes on for the first little bit. Now we actually have three legends here, those being Crypto, Pathfinder, and Seer. Now Crypto is a bit of an interesting legend because not a lot of people actually understand how strong Crypto's kit is when used to its full advantages. If you can get Crypto to an end game position where he could just sit on his Game Boy, scan the buildings around him, find spots to play, see where people are, EMP somebody in the final circle hitting all the teams and allowing you and your team to just clean up kills, it's where Crypto really shines. Now yes, there are some aggressive plays you can make with Crypto with some Something like an ash portal or a wraith portal where they get into position you emp and then they go in off that and before this split with alter you could alter through the wall with the crypto emp and not get hit by it but now that's changed but yes there are still some aggressive plays you can make with crypto so that's not to say that crypto isn't just a legend that has to sit passive every single time it's just what he is better at but i don't think a lot of people are really going to be understanding how strong crypto can be especially with the bangalore smoke changes and no longer having any digi threats on ground having a legend that can see through the smokes and can get you guys scans going on is going to be a very strong ability to have especially if bangalore is far away Way, you can't contest the smoke so you don't get the white highlights if you can get the drone there so that your team can see the people that are healing in the smoke or hiding in the smoke that is going to be strong and that's why i think he's secretly broken right now moving on to the next legend we have pathfinder and i do want to kind of put pathfinder with an asterisk here because i don't think people really think that he's secretly broken i think a lot of people do understand how good pathfinder is but with the changes that pathfinder has received going into split two where if he gets the assist on a knock that also resets his cooldown on his grapple that is going to help make pathfinder extremely aggressive again. One of the biggest issues that Pathfinder has had in the past is his extremely long cooldowns on his grapple. He can't be as gung-ho as he once was in the past in like preseason stuff like that. But now with him able to reset his grapple cooldown so easily, I do think that Pathfinder is going to be a very strong aggressive legend once again. And I do think that people are not going to be respecting how good this grapple cooldown is because they don't really understand how good Pathfinder can be because they haven't seen Pathfinder at full strength. You have to remember a lot of people People that are playing right now never saw Pathfinder in his heyday, so they don't know how aggressive the robot can be. That is why I think he's a solid, secretly broken legend right now. But the last legend in secretly broken is going to be Seer, and I do think that the Seer meta is going to be coming back, not at full strength, but a lot stronger than it has been in the past couple seasons. Seer is still a pretty strong legend. He still can do a lot of the things that a scan legend needs to do. And with the nerfs that he did receive when the Seer meta was still in its heyday, and even with all of the nerfs that Seer has received, the class passes basically take those away. So Seer still has a ton of potential with the heartbeat sensor, with the tactical scan, and also with his ultimate because that does see through the Bangalore smoke. Seer still does everything that a scan legend needs to do and he does it well. The only reason he was not as popular is because Bloodhound was just such a stronger character being able to see through the smoke constantly. But with the Bloodhound nerfs and the Bangalore smoke changes, Seer is going to be a very solid option and I do think a lot of people need to respect how good Seer is still. But now we can move into the S tier legends, the top legends, and there are four of them finding themselves here. We have Bangalore, Newcastle, Revenant, and Ray. Now, despite the changes to the Bangalore smoke, she is still a very strong legend because Digi threats are a thing of the past. They took it off the floor loot, they took it off the sniper rifle optics, they took it off Bloodhound Ultimate. There are only a handful of ways that people can actually see through Bangalore smoke now, and one of them is only if they actually contest the smoke and they're right up in your face, which you can also see them, so it is a fair fight. Bangalore is still good at cutting off line of sight for your team on rotations she's still good at doing what she needs to do for the team and her ultimate is just as strong as it's ever been for stalling pushes or creating options to push or just doing a bunch of different things she is still a very solid legend she's still an s tier legend don't be fooled by people trying to rage bait or clickbait by saying bangler's gone she's still a good legend now next up of course guys we have newcastle he's still just one of the strongest legends in the game and i don't know if it's you guys actually starting to listen to me or if somebody else said something but i have I've seen a massive increase of Newcastles now. Before, I only saw Newcastle every couple games, but now I see one pretty much every single game. So I'm actually really happy that Newcastle is starting to get the recognition he deserves and people are actually finally starting to see how good of a legend he is. He has the strongest revive in the game. He has the ability to make a wall that can move with him to help push or run away from a fight. 
and he can just slam down his ultimate to give your team a spot to play no matter where you are, and he can even jump to a teammate to save them from a potential death. And when he does slam that ultimate down, it does get energized, which does make it hard to have you naded out because it does do what Watson's pylon does and intercepts enemy ordnance. Newcastle is strong. I need you guys to understand this. I need you guys to start playing him because he's going to help you climb S tier. Now, next up, we have the raid boss Revenant. He's still as strong as he has been in the past. And actually, I would argue that he's kind of stronger because because like Pathfinder, his Grim Leaper passive ability now does also reset his tactical on an assist knock, and it makes it so that he doesn't have to actually get the knock himself, which again makes him very strong at being super aggressive. He was already good at that before. This makes him even better at it. He's still just an S tier legend. His ultimate makes him a raid boss because of how much armor he gets. Having to deal like 300 damage to him if he's on red armor is incredibly difficult to actually deal with, and it does come back fairly quickly. Revenant's insanely strong. He's good at for people that are super aggressive, and he's also a great solo queue legend. So Revenant S tier. The last legend in S tier is Wraith. Wraith has always been a very solid staple pick in Apex. It doesn't matter what kind of playstyle you want to have or what you want to do, Wraith is able to do it. And she's actually one of the safest legends in the game. If you want to play split from your team or anything like that, you can do it because she just has a get out of jail free card built into her kit. She also has one of the best movement tools for your entire team. If you need to get somebody from point A to point B extremely safely, there's no better option than a Wraith portal. Now, Wraith's pick rate has fallen in the last little bit. I'm not going to lie, but just because a pick rate is down doesn't make a legend a week. Just look at Newcastle. He's one of the lowest pick rates in the game, and he's one of the strongest legends, if not the strongest legend in the game. But let me know if you would change any of these legends tiers in the comments down below. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Apex legends, tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Thanks all for watching. Once again, I made Second Gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one.